Hi everyone and welcome to War Thunder. My name is Corpen and uh, today I thought we would have a closer look at the M26 Pershing. A uh, medium tank, although it was labeled as a heavy tank during uh, World War II, but that was mainly just for uh, moral purposes to boost the morale of the troops since uh, they would think that they had a heavy tank uh, amongst them that could battle the tiger and oh yes it could indeed battle the tiger with the 90mm cannon that it had. Um, normally I start the video out by talking about the tank and the specs in the garage but however there seemed to be something wrong with my recording software at the moment. I just downloaded a software update for it and now it's just freezing all the time. So instead of not uploading a video at all this weekend, I decided to uh, start the video like this by showing you some gameplay where I uh, knocked out this King Tiger Henschel turreted heavy tank in a very sneaky way by firing through the building and I don't even think that he knew where the fire was coming from at all until he was dead. <laughs> but normally we, as I said earlier, we have a look at the tank specs and whatnot. But that is going to come at the later stage of this uh, video. And since I can't record in the garage while I'm talking at the moment, <laughs> most of this uh, review will be me live commentating on gameplay at the same time as I'm playing the M26 Pershing. We'll also look at uh, a Berlin game where I start on the other side of the map and I worse IS-3s in the M26 Pershing. So we'll see how the tank fares against some of the heavier tanks in the game, such as the IS-3 and IS-2 Mod 44. So yeah, enjoy guys, hope you like the review. It's early in the morning and uh, yeah, we're in Hürgen Forest. I tend to have one of uh, one battle per video on this map. And we're in the Pershing today. I think I'm gonna try to flank actually. Yeah, seems like we have company by a T44. This is a good mix, the T44 and the Pershing teaming up. I, he has the speed and maneuverability, I have the hitting power. It's kinda cool, really. We're gonna switch over to APCR, I believe. Since the first round is going to hurt the enemy tank and then after that that enemy tank will probably see where I where I was or where I am and start turning or traversing towards my direction unless I kill it with the first blow and if I do yeah then uh, that's it I can just switch back over to uh, regular AP ammo but uh, yeah the APCR rounds are great. Although they lack a fuse delay and that means that the shell won't explode, it's just a, it's just something like a dart of uh, molten metal or a dart of metal that pierces the hull. A bit like a saber shell really. Doesn't really do all that much damage but uh, yeah it will just tear holes straight through the enemy tank. And if I'm not completely mistaken, I think the uh, APCR rounds in this tank has something like 307-ish millimeters of penetration at 10 meters range. So they're great. Okay, so let's keep our eyes open here. That's the Hellcat. Scan for targets. Hellcat is. Whoops, that's a tree. Did 
T44 over there. Hellcat, Hellcat bypassed him. I want to see if we can make it over to this area. Now this is a bit hazardous to be honest because if they crest that ridge I'm out here in the open. That's a tank, don't know what kind. No? It wasn't just looked like it on my screen. Hmm. Okay. How about that then? No. Incoming fire from over here. Yeah, that's a Jag Panther. This should be a one shot kill. No, it's not. Okay. But he's all kinds of messed up. And to be honest, we don't really know need the APCR here. So that's a good kill. It did not fire more than I had to. That's a P-51. Means it's friendly. And that was a good example of how you can really reveal your position by firing, so never fire unless you have to. At least not in simulator battles, because people will be out there listening, and if there's a tank nearby, like I was here, they will zero in on your location right away, be sure of that, so he just fired one shot and that gave him away, and I could find him very easily uh, make short work of it as a tank right yeah that's actually three tanks we have a panther at the back so let's aim for him I think he's about 1400 something like that oh that was way high okay so let's go for 1300 then Still high. 1200. 1200 should do it. Hit the loader. Just a tad bit lower. Now he's trying to reverse into cover. That's a miss. We're going for a hull shot now. That's my guess. Hit the turret again, okay. He's now suspecting where's the f where the fire is coming from, but that won't save him. So let's go for that King Tide then. Now that we have the range more or less dialed in, we can put some easy effective fire on these guys. That's a bounce. Now he noticed that he was taking fire right away. So unless I fire now, he won't see me. That was close. Let's see if we can knock him out. He's going in behind those buildings, okay. No biggie though. We have time. Enough to wait around. There he is. Let's see if we can snipe him. It serves him right. Now you're dead. Yeah, good kill. Good kill. May that be a showcase about what being patient and just Ooh, shit. being keeping the cool, keeping your cool will do for you. Now this is going to be a long range uh, engagement here. Hit him. I think we'll switch over to APCR now, since we do need to get get through that armor it him right. 
Now if we start putting some hurt on that tank, he'll panic, start moving. That's good. We want him to be moving and not to be shooting at me, so... Dang. That's... So he's staying there, is he? We need to deal with that panther, I believe. Oh, more incoming fire. Now maybe you shouldn't just be out there in the open, because I have your range. Or so I thought. Nice. Have some backup as well. Now this is turned into a dual video against the uh, Panther as well. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to make a video like that. I wanted to have an M26 Pershing versus Panther video because that's one epic battle that took place somewhere can't really recall the town but I think it was in oh crap that's a that's a TD but we need to deal with the panther first I don't care about the Virbalvin panther first he's the most dangerous one and then right after that the Jai Panzer 4 Yeah, that guy Panzer IV is really putting some hurt on me. Let's see if we can deal with that guy. Where he at? No? There he is. Too far. Oh! I'm miscalculating or I'm reading the lines wrong. That should be better. Still a bit high. Now he's in all kinds of trouble. Got the transmission and the driver. That means that he can't get out of there, so that's good. Probably we should switch over to normal AP rounds now. I think that's a better idea. Since these rounds will actually dive down on the uh, armor deck. I think I got hit by a plane there. But I'm really having some help from that uh, M18 Hellcat, and that's good. Now we need to get down into cover before that Jagger bomber comes back. I was largely on I was largely inactive during the second half of the game but during the start there knocked out four tanks and got one assist so that was all good a really nice game um let's have a quick look at the armor on this tank you see that you have roughly a hundred millimeters of uh, sloped armor here on the upper hull or in the upper glazes so that's give that gives you something like 130 roughly if you angle the tank slightly you get a lot more armor so please to keep that in mind try to angle your tank if you can but do mind that you have a side armor plate effective thickness with 230 millimeters so definitely keep that in mind you have a roughly 180 for at the back and you do also have the roll wheels keeping your tank safe and acting as spaced armor if you angle the tank like this so the turret is the weak part of this tank 
really. Um, if you get hit right in the gun shield or the gun mantlet, you'll probably take a penetrating hit by the kind of enemies you're facing. And the same goes for uh, the low glazes, which really isn't anything worthy of bragging about. It's really thinly armored, but it still has an effective thickness of 155 millimeters. But then again, if you take a penetrating hit there, the shrapnel will most probably ignite the ammo being situated at the bottom of the tank. So when looking at the tank, uh, you can really see that here they had learned their lesson and they learned to place the ammo at the bottom of the tank as much as they could. Now they still have ammo racks here on the sides who might take a penetrating hit but uh, yeah keeping the ammo low in the tank really helps it out a lot. Uh, I didn't know that there's an ammo rack right here on the right hand side or the left hand side of the uh, turret. So that might be a weak spot to aim for if you want to knock this tank out. But you do have uh, additional armor here in the way of tracks. So yeah, keep that in mind. If you see the, the add-on armor bits here, the track repair kit up on the turret, aim for that because that's the ammo rack. I've never thought of that before. M18 Hellcats moving in for C. I think I'll try to flank around. Like always, I always prefer to flank if I can. And since I'm in the medium tank with not all that much armor, it's fairly armored for being a medium tank, but it's not a heavy tank in any sense the imagination so although it was initially labeled as a heavy tank but that was mainly just to boost morale oh incoming fire not for me though but for one of my teammates gonna move up so there was someone firing from over there Let's see if we can keep the double thickets of trees here to cover us. Don't really like rushing over open fields towards uh, your own tanks. That tends to end in failure. Oh! You saw those? Or did you see those? That's enemies. And I do, I'm not sure how to play this out. One is looking that way, the other... I guess I could knock out the panther, but that would uh, give away my position. Let's just wait until they get fired upon or something like that and then we strike yeah turn around the turret I am thinking that's about 500 let's wait for him to turn around the turret to the right sooner or later he will do that and then we hit or, better, he move up. That's actually a lot better. We can deal with the panther down in the gully. That means we knock out the king tiger. When we get a good opportunity for a shot. And then we go for the panther. Come again. Oh no, that was Swedish. Come on. <laughs> Turn your turret. That guy is just standing over watch at the moment. He's just waiting. And now we fired. Incoming fight. Let's wait for him to fire once again and then we fire. Good hit. Dang! 
that's something someone fight oh that's a uh, Yag Panzer. He's dead. Lucky I was lucky there. The heavy armor of the medium tank actually saved me this time. I had no idea he was here. Now that King Tiger is actually looking my way. That's rather alarming to be honest. No he's not. Okay. That was uh, not the penetrating head. Now I wonder what happened with that uh, panther. Come on. Let's switch over to APCR and knock out this king tiger. He's taking fire from multiple directions, so should be a bit concerned by now. Let's try to aim for his uh, lower glazes. That's a kill. Cool. Man, I had no idea that Jagdpanzer was there and now we're taking fire again. I would assume that's the uh, Jagdpanzer is respawned. Yeah. Oh, Panzer. We can at least grab that kill before we die. <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea. But then again, you stay in one place too long and they will zero you in. And that was what happened to me there. So, this is the last game for this video. Yeah, this video has become one of those videos, one of those 40 minutes monsters. But I think that this tag deserves that kind of attention because you know most people doesn't really pay the Pershing all that much attention and it is indeed a good tag. Now this is an old battle as you can see here I'm bursting the IS-3 try to put a well-placed APCR round no uh, excuse me an AP round into the back of the turret Turns out the IS-3 is better than that, so well, uh, yeah, <laughs> that shell bounced, and it left me a bit pissed off actually. But I got my revenge there. Put the second bullet into the side of the tank. The second I saw him firing uh, his AA machine gun, and knocked out that IS-3. And also, would say this is an old game captured couple of months ago when uh, the 6.7 bracket in the BR would face uh, IS-3 tanks which were at the battle rating 7.7 .7 at that time and this combined with the sloped armor buff made IS-3 a very overpowered tank for this BR bracket so of course a lot of people uh, acknowledged this and they uh, started using or abusing maybe I should say the IS-3 in realistic battles or just in battles in general. Back then APCR rounds really put some hurt on enemy tanks and we are going to see a few examples of that during this game. So I started out somewhat conservative just hanging back and uh, relocate to a different flank and watch this <laughs> did you see what happened maybe you didn't so we're gonna have a look at the replay now watch i fire to knock out the is3 i hit the csu 37 it goes straight through knocks out the uh, cannon breach there and loader and then it just obliterates the IS-3 behind it <laughs> so that felt really good sort of uh, two birds in one stone shot there you don't see those all too often but they're nice and funny to watch when they occur so really there are two things happening in this game you have 
the power gamers, I call them power gamers, who um, exploit any kind of uh, advantage that they can get in the game. You know, during the early days of the uh, ground forces, after it was uh, released out into open beta, a lot of people used uh, T-54s because there, there weren't any kind of counter weapon against the T-54 and they could just ruffle stomp any kind of opposition without uh, risking getting knocked out really. So you have people in this game who are using IS-3s because they were the flavor of that day overpowered tank until they got a little bit nerfed and they had their BR uh, increased to 8.0 and that would put them into games that would be uh, rank 5 only so obviously the IS-3 isn't the best tank at rank 5 you have <laughs> a few tanks that are a lot better than IS-3 so people just stopped playing it and that tank became uh, a grind fest that you had to get through to get to the IS-4 that was before the T-10M uh, by the way and the second thing that you have in this game is uh, people who are abusing the ultra low graphical quality settings to gain an upper hand in the game and uh, yeah so it felt really good to just knock out a few IS-3s there in the early stages of the game and now the abusers can't use their IS-3s to ruffle stomp uh, poor Tiger 2s and Pershing tanks in the game so they have to uh, resort back to uh, IS-2 mod 44s because that's the second best tank in this tire on the Russian side so uh, now I have to face them instead and really that is the kind of opposition I should face in the first place still the players we face use ultra low graphical settings or maybe they're just playing on bad computers I don't know so I take a hit here I knocked out the CSU 37 but uh, as you could see there there was something just firing at me from way back uh, lucky I was lucky enough it hit the brick wall there but considering the reload time and since I do not take a second hit. I am thinking it's probably IS-2 mod 44. We just missed his shot barely, or maybe the round just... Yeah, there's the second round incoming. Uh, second round also hit the uh, brick wall. Can't really see my enemy. Don't really know where he is, so I know that my position here is compromised, so I just kind of reverse out and check the damage seems like it's fine and then I decide to switch flank and try to support the, support my friendly team from the other side if I can and even though the Russian team had a clear advantage during the first stages of the game where almost everyone was in IO3 tank we have now leveled the playing field. Uh, we stood against the tide of IS-3s and we knocked a few of them out. And uh, now we can at last play against each other on equal terms. And I spot this IS-2 mod 44. Or maybe it's just an IS-2. Yeah, it's an IS-2. Hit him in the side of the turret. That's a done deal, he's done for, and now I can move up the flank and try to secure the cap from the side so that my teammates can move up and take it. And meanwhile I'm scanning for enemy threats to see whether there are more tanks coming up or not. And this was probably one of the first games where I more or less encountered only IS-2 tanks or IS-3 tanks and many players on the Russian team didn't really use anything else than these heavy tanks 
because their 122mm cannon is more or less like a derp gun and it will knock out your tank in one shot if it hits and get a clean penetration. Which it won't at longer ranges, I should probably say. So if you stay far away from them, you will probably win the duels, especially in the M26 version. Now, I took a hit there from far away. I had no chance of seeing that tank. So naturally, I do what all players do. I stop and I start typing. <laughs> But then I take a hit from the side and I can realize that there's something on my left. See the muscle flash there, but I can't do anything about it since I'm repairing the tank behind this tank break. So that's my first M26 Pershing. And that T44 saw me from the side, had a good clean shot at the turret and yeah. You're done for if you get hit there. And you could also see from that replay uh, by the kill cam. I don't know if you noticed, but you could actually see there that uh, if you take less rounds with the M26 Pershing, the first magazine that will be emptied is the magazine in the turret. So that's a very useful thing to know. But I get my second spawn in the M26. Yes, you did get two spawns in realistic battles at this time. And boy, I do need them as well, since <laughs> considering the uh, kind of position we're going up against. And there's a few players left on my team still. So we're doing, all in all, we're doing kind of okay. We're sort of winning the game. And... Uh, I'm trying to support my team here. Have a teammate who's going up for the cap. I'm kind of thinking though that probably what I should do, since the players on the Russian side are using heavy tanks, I don't really want to go head to head with the Russian heavy tank because they stand a very a fair chance of knocking me out with their first shot at close to medium range so initially I'm just parking up here and trying to get my hull protected and I find a nice and suitable KV-1 to park behind but no sorry what's that uh, T-44 anyhow I park behind it and nothing happens for the longest of periods so I go out to the flank try to support my cap by just setting up on the flank. Meanwhile, the A cap that we just secured gets uh, neutralized by something. So it's uh, there's the tank in the cap. So I move back, and once again, what I try to do is to come up from behind uh, the probable approach of the enemy tank. And you can, I can see here that there's some kind of fight happening around the cap zone, so... And still, instead of just rushing straight forwards towards the uh, enemy tank, which by the way might have put me in the hazard zone of those bombs, <laughs> by the way, I, um, I go around and I try to flank, always try to flank in medium tanks, and uh, like always, it pays off. He spots me, but he spots me too late, so I get to put one round into the back of his IS-2 mod 44 <laughs> turret. Uh, doesn't the thick armor and sloped frontal upper hull on the IS-2 mod 44 doesn't help him when he's taking fire from behind. And at the same time, B is being capped, so I need to uh, make my way over here. What I should have done in hindsight is just to go straight up. But I'm thinking that he's the guy in the cap zone who is taking uh, the B zone, has probably been reading the kill feed. So what I'm trying to do 
I think that he's suspecting that I might be coming up behind him. So what I'm trying to do once more is that I'm trying to flank the area that I think he's watching. So I try to go up behind him. And uh, all of a sudden, we lose the game. <laughs> Probably the time just ended there. So we lost the game. Russians won like 98% of those uh, 6.7 buff rating games during that week. But we scored a few kills. I ended up with uh, 5 kills, so it's not all too bad. So yeah, all in all, this is a great tank. I like it. I've played it a lot and it's a really good one. It's uh, nice and maneuverable. It's quite fast. It's not the fastest medium tank, obviously. Here's my unlocked uh, modifications for it. So yeah, the APCR round, 305 millimeters of pen. And that APCR round is really effective up to very long ranges. Whereas the normal AP round can scales down. But this is the round that will deal massive amount of damage if you hit uh, mostly due to the fuse delay of 1.2 meters that you can see down there in the description. That means the shell will penetrate the tank. Um, if you hit the tank in the side like this, the shell will come in, penetrate, and then one and 1.2 meters later around here it will detonate. So even if you penetrate the tank, uh, the detonation will won't happen right away, it will happen a bit later, like inside the tank. So what that means is that if you hit the Pershing with your Pershing, like if the Pershing hits itself right here at the front of the upper hull and the shot penetrates, it passes through these two crewmen and detonates 1.2 meters in behind them, so that's about where the ammo rack is. So. <laughs> This tank could definitely knock out itself, no problem. But you don't have that kind of fuse delay in the APCR round. That's just that slug tungsten round, I guess. I guess it's tungsten. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, that's been me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you all for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys around.